Hi guys, this is Johnny Boy from Johnny Boy Fishing. And today, I'm just going to show you how to rig up for black fishing when you want to think about taking a shot, trying to catch one of these really difficult creatures. Um, today, I'm going to be showing you my three favorite rigs to use for black fishing. Show you the advantages and disadvantages of these rigs. Um, three years ago, I made a video on how to catch black fish. So, and do a little bit better here. Alright, so I have three rigs here. Um, these are my three go to rigs that I use for black fish. Um, but I will go in the order as to why I prefer one over the other. So if I had to rate them, this would be my number one. This is a inline trolling sinker rig. You can see. It just stays in line. In line trolling sinker. Alright. We'll go in more depth after this. We have our inline egg sinker rig. See, you can see our egg sinker. There we go. Alright. Again, we'll go in more depth later. And then we have our standard rig that many people use, which is this bad boy. Let me get this going again. Alright, here we go. Most people use this. Alright, so let's go in depth. So if I had to rate these, number one, number two, and number three. The reason why I like this one is that it stays in line. You know, if you move the sinker, you move the hook as well. Everything stays stagnant. It doesn't move. Everything is just stays there. If it's if there's a six inch gap between these between these two things, that means there's a six inch gap. No more, no less. I use this primarily for all my blackfish fishing, but the problem is, is it's really hard to find. And we'll go more in detail why I would choose this over everything else. So we'll see that again. My second choice would be an egg sinker. Um, I used to use this a very long time ago. I like it. I really do like it. It has the same features as this one, but it's a little bit different. And the reason why it's different is that it's inline egg sinker. So your sinker will move up and down depending on the tension of your line and where the sinker is placed. We'll go in more details after this. My third would be this one. The regular standard blackfish rig. I don't know what they call it. You may call it a high-low rig. I don't know, but I just call it a standard rig because many people just use this. Some people put another hook on there and they, they hook two hooks to them. We'll go more in details with this later on. So those are your three rigs that I like to use. You know, they're nothing fancy. They're they I call them pocket rigging, where you have these all these components in your pockets. If you snag off, you can easily rig yourself up in less than 15 seconds. Alright guys, so this is how I like to make the snell knot when I'm tying my blackfish hooks. There's many ways to do it. A lot of people have different preferences, but this is my favorite way. It's a little bit slow, but it's more efficient. It works for me. Um, rarely have I ever had one of these hooks bail out on me and, you know, kill me. So, to get started, we're using a 2 aught. I'm sorry, 3 aught. Mustad J hooks. These are designed specifically for blackfish. They're blue, the bluish color, and uh, I'm going to use this as a demonstration because many people use these hooks. So we're going to grab about maybe let's see, 18 inches, maybe 18, 24 inches of monofilament. This is 40 pound monofilament. I love using monofilament for blackfish. It's my preference. I don't use braid. It's, in fact, the only fish that I'll only use mono for. So, 
we're going to grab our little piece of line. I'm just going to wet up my uh, my spit just a little bit just so that I don't get any any chafings when when you know when you rub line together they do burn especially with monofilament and fluorocarbon so what I'm gonna do now I'm gonna grab the hook I'm gonna grab it I'm gonna have the point facing this way you can see I'm holding it right near the barb but I'm facing it this way what I'm gonna do now I'm just gonna take the first end I'm just gonna go through going downwards so I'm going through and going downwards but if you look here I'm gonna go through here and I'm actually gonna turn it to my right because I want it to sit right behind the hook if I'm looking at it like this I just want to sit it, let it sit right behind that hook so now you can't see it so now I'm actually gonna take this piece I'm gonna go through downwards to up so I'm gonna go this way so we're just gonna go doesn't matter what area which side you put it on as long as it goes through so we're gonna cinch it up now here's the thing sometimes it'll tend to flip up like that let me see if I can get it to flip up sometimes it'll flip up like this I don't like that I don't like it. it is my preference my recommendation so what I do if that happens I'll just flip it down all I'll do is just flip it down I'm gonna grab it until I have maybe about maybe a two inch diameter circle. All I'm doing is now that is C is laying right right behind it, I'm gonna grab a little piece of this loop right here. This maybe two diam two inch diameter loop. All I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab it, I'm just gonna go over the hook and the line. See? I'm just gonna go over the hook. You can see and right over the line. Let's see if I can do this again this way. You can go over the hook and right over the line. So that's three times over the line. Four times. I'm just gonna push it up. Sometimes when you don't push it up and you've tied in loose, this tag end will, will tend to go, it'll tend to slip this way. So you have to pull it out a little bit more. So now that I have it four times. I'm just going to go five times, so there's five, one more time, six times. Six times is the actual safe number, but I like lucky number seven, so I go a seventh time. You can go up to eight, you can go up to ten times, but I like seven times. So you can see it's going to look like coils right here. So now I'm just going to push it up, and it will constitute a snell if you look at it real closely it's tied up nicely so what I'm gonna do I don't recommend doing this but I like using my teeth to grab onto this piece here and then I'm gonna pull up while I pull this with my another hand down but I'm gonna use pliers for this case so what I'm gonna do is just gonna grab this tag end right here make sure I got it good before I do that I'm just gonna I'm just gonna wet it a little bit with my saliva alright so I'm just gonna grab this piece with the pliers and then and then I'm just gonna grab with pliers you can see that we're all facing this way so I'm gonna grab this one I'm gonna do it real quick I'm gonna take this and pull up and I'm gonna take this with my other hand and pull down. You'll see this. So there we go. So now that it's tied up and cinch, I'm just gonna pull it up a little bit. I'm just gonna get it a little bit better. Just adjust it a little bit. Tie it up a little bit better. So I'm just gonna get it good. So, you can see what I did when I was doing that cinching part. I was just grabbing this, and I did it quick so I didn't, because I didn't want it to go undone. I was grabbing this, 
I let go and pull this and I pull this one up and I pull this one down. I pull this one up, pull this, this one down at the same time. So, and then I just, I just pull this down a little bit. I just cinch it up a little bit more. And, you know, now we can do some trimming. Go all the way down. You can see that's probably one of the most beautiful snails that you ever find right there. That's seven wrapped snail. So we're going to grab our other end here and we're just going to make a super simple loop. Let's make the simple loop. Take a simple loop. We're just going to put two lines together. We're going to pull it. We're just going to just going to put them together. So we're just going to put them together. We're just going to pull it real small. We put one one going one time. I like going in two times. Make it more secure. And all you do is just pull it. Cinch up this part. You don't need to wet this part because you're not really um, rubbing lines too, too much. So, there. There is your, your hook that I like using. You can see it's probably one of the most efficient snells that I ever used. Very, very, it takes time, but it's really, really strong. Make them ahead of time the day before, and look, you have enough to last you a day. And that's what I call pocket rigging. With beautiful snails. Alright, so our first rig that we're going to do is our standard, standard rig with the 2 ounce bank sinker and our freshly snelled hook so to do this all we have to do shouldn't take long more than 15 seconds to do this but uh, I'm gonna do this really slow for you guys so first you want to grab the line you want to grab maybe about two inches and make a loop and put them together You're just gonna loop it up one time. There we go. Now, put this down. Now, just gonna take the sinker. We're just gonna go through. And, and just slide it right through. That's it. We shouldn't go up. Maybe. Maybe six inches, or six to eight inches. Make another loop right there. We'll make one more. We'll grab our hook that we snelled and made. I'm just gonna go through here. See, just go right through and go right through with the the hook, and that is your first sinker. The advantages of this is that if if you have the sinker just laying on a rock, this can be dangling inside a crevice or a hole. If blackfish eats it. You you set the hook. This you're not gonna feel since it's laying directly on top of the sinker. It's lent farther up. So if fish hits it and it runs with it, it's gonna hook itself before it even feels the sinker. The only problem with this is that it's more prone to get snagged. So if you get snagged here, if you have a fish, more likely you might be able to lose this, you might lose this whole rig. Or if you get lucky, you just break off the sinker. So that's the first rig. Our second is the inline egg sinker rig. So I don't have any two ounce and egg sinkers but I'm just gonna use this one ounce just for demonstration so what we're gonna do with this is that we're just gonna thread it our line through the line here now we're just gonna grab uh, maybe the same length of the loop we made we're just gonna tie it in we're gonna tie it in twice because we don't want that loop to get undone if that loop gets undone we lose everything so, so there's two. So, I'm using mono, so I already have a stopper. So 
So if you're using braid, you're going to need a barrel swivel. So I already have a stopper. So now we just grab the hook. Grab our hook. You just go right through. You can see. You just go right through. Same process to looping the hook and the, and the sinker together. And there it is. Your egg sinker rig. The advantages of this is that since everything is in line, you're less likely to get snagged, and you're you're you'll be able to um, get out of snags easy if you just loosen the tension. If you loosen the tension, this will go up the line, causing this to get undone a little bit, get this a little bit looser, so you can get a, get out of a snag. But that's not always going to happen. You're not always going to get out of a snag. So. 50-50 chance of losing everything or, f or getting your whole rig back. The only disadvantage I have about this is that sometimes if a fish does hit it and a blackfish does hit it, if it grabs it and it runs with it, if this is laying on a rock or something like this, if it's laying like this on a rock or a structure, uh, fish is not going to feel it. It's just going to keep going and going with it. So if you do set the hook, you're gonna have to wait until this sinker goes all the way back to the stopper and sometimes by the time it hits the stopper you lose the fish so it's really really it's, it's not the best but it actually helps you it's still good but it's just depending on how your sinker sits on structure you can see it's just sliding down 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 so if the fish if you set the hook you pull this It'll take a while for it to come. It'll just take a while for it to go to the stopper. So that's my second rig. So my third and my favorite, favorite rig to use for blackfish is a inline trolling sinker rig. So let's get started. This is a regular inline trolling sinker. This is a two ounce. Um, difference between a uh, few trolling sinkers that sometimes don't only have one eye but you really want the ones that have two eyes that's why they cost really expensive they cost more than your regular banks and egg sinkers and they're really hard to find for a good price especially in bulk so it, so if I don't have any of these I'll stick with one or the other two rigs that I've said beforehand so to tie this up all we do is make your loop again, same thing. One, we're gonna go in one time and two times. See, don't want it to slip. If that thing slips, we lose everything. So, it's gonna take any side. You can do any side. Go in the eye socket. Just gonna loop it in. This is starting to get cool. Just looping everything in. There we go. So you should have something like this. Now, grab our hook. Same process with looping in our hook. You know, just go through the eye socket. I'm gonna go in the other eye socket here. I'm just gonna loop it in. So, there we go. So you don't have to worry about that. Uh, most of the times they go through. But that's that's your rig. Let me see if I can get this to go through. Nah, I can't get it to go through. But this is your rig. This is my ultimate blackfish rig. And I'm going to show you why I like it. I'm going to show you the advantages of this. Like an egg sinker, it stays in line. See? It's just like the egg sinker. It's just like this, but it stays. It stays stagnant. It stays there. It doesn't move. So if it stays on the ocean floor, if it stays on a rock bed, if anything like that, it doesn't move as long as you don't touch it. If you nudge the line, if you pull it in, everything moves. And if it's sitting in a structure like this. If it's hanging right off a structure, a rock's here, a rock's here, and it's right on top of the rocks, blackfish are more likely to see it. You'll get it dangling into a hole. If it grabs it, you, you can feel it. 
you'll feel it right away. If you set the hook, you'll set, you'll grab everything, the sinker and the hook. So this, so it's not like the egg sinker where um, if the fish doesn't feel it, um, it'll just run, it'll keep it in its mouth and it'll run with it. But this one, if it grabs it, it will definitely feel the weight. Most likely they'll hook themselves, but you really need to set the hook, especially with J hooks. So once you set that hook, you get everything. It has the same features of the egg sinker, you know. Uh, it doesn't get snagged a lot. Most of the times if you do get snagged, you will lose this you will lose the hook instead. So this is my go-to, this is my number one. If I don't have this, I'll go to one of the other two. And there it is. A perfect blackfish rig. It's kind of like a Carolina rig, but uh, I like it like this a little bit. It's less, it's less complicated, and you know, you just need two things: the hook and the sinker. I am using a six foot six, medium heavy action rod. I don't want to go too he too long because seriously, the longer the rod is, the less control you have over the rig. So the short, you know, six foot six, seven footers, they're, they're perfect. So I, I can control, I can pinpoint where I want to throw at in order to get the, the hit that I'm constantly getting, you know, at this cer certain particular spot. That's my rig right there. That's my go-to rig. If I don't have that rig, I'll just use a standard, you know, high-low rig. That's it. That's a trolling sinker. They call it a torpedo sinker. It's easy to put on, you know, you thread it into your main line. And then, you know, you put in your the hook that you tied, hopefully tied on your own, you know, it should really be like an inline sinker rig style. I'm using a pen SSG850, 850, I think it's a pen SSG, I'm not sure, or SSM, I'll look into that a little bit, you know, later on. Definitely a great fishing, great fishery to be fishing, but you know the stocks are a little bit low, so it's taking a big dent, a big hit, a big impact. So I know I don't know how long this fishery is gonna is gonna last, but I always do my best to make sure there's fish down there for every single one of us to catch.